हेलो माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल दैट्स कॉन्सेप्ट्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री सो टुडे इज टॉपिक फॉर द लेक्चर इज बर्जेलियस एंड एवेगेड्रो हाइपोथेसिस लेट्स कम बैक टू द प्रीवियस लेक्चर दैट आई हैव रिकॉर्डेड फॉर यू दैट्स डेल्ट एनाडोमिक थ्योरी एंड इट्स लिमिटेशन वॉट डज डेल्ट एटोमिक थ्योरी सेज द डेल्ट एटोमिक थ्योरी सेज दैट एलिमेंट्स कंबाइन विद वन अनदर in a simple whole number ratios and what was the limitation of dalton atomic theory the limitation was that dalton atomic theory could explain the law of conservation of mass the law of definite proportion the law of multiple proportion the law of reciprocal proportion but dalton theory failed to explain gay-lussac's law of gaseous volumes so there come a person called berzelius who tried to correlate the gay-lussac law of gaseous volume and dalton atomic theory so that's the topic for today let's discuss the berzelius hypothesis first before writing the berzelius hypothesis i am going to write two laws for you so that you it become easy for you understanding this concept firstly i am writing the topic of the today's lecture that's berzelius hypothesis before going to start this topic i'm writing two laws for you firstly according to gay-lussac's law gases always combine with one another gases always combine with one another in a simple ratios by their volume in a simple ratios by their volumes i have discussed this law in detail in the previous video now i'm talking about the dalton atomic theory according to dalton atomic theory elements combine with one another combine with one another in a simple whole number ratios in a simple whole number whole number ratios so the berzelius tried to Berzelius tried to correlate these two laws and he gave the he gave his hypothesis uh, that's the relationship between relationship between the volume of a gas and the number of atoms and the and the 
नंबर ऑफ एटम्स इन डेट स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम इन डेट स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम इज कॉल्ड बर्जेलियस हाइपोथिस what does what does berzelius hypothesis exactly states it states that equal volume of all gases under similar condition of temperature and pressure contain equal number of atoms that's exactly the berzelius hypothesis is that he has found the relationship between the number of atoms and the volume of that gas it says that equal volumes of all gases under similar condition of temperature and pressure under similar condition of temperature and pressure contain equal number of atoms contains equal number of atoms so this is the statement of berzelius hypothesis it states that equal volume of all gases let me take two gases oxygen and nitrogen under similar condition of temperature and pressure this point is important under under similar condition of temperature and pressure this point is important that two gases under similar condition of temperature and pressure will have equal number of atoms so let us try to correlate with this a uh, chemical reaction so i am writing as an uh, i am writing an example for example i am writing complete hydrogen my dear students you have to write the hydrogen word complete because at the time of berzelius hypothesis he didn't knew yeah we didn't knew that the molecular formula of hydrogen is h2 this we know it today but at the time of berzelius we didn't knew that so i am writing it in the full form hydrogen and oxygen it will combine to uh, let me take an example of chlorine sorry hydrogen and chlorine it will combine to form me hydrogen chloride gas hydrogen chloride gas i have taken hydrogen gas i have reacted this thing with chlorine gas and i got the hydrogen chloride gas at that time we didn't knew that the molecular formula of hydrogen is h2 the chlorine gas is cl2 and that of hydrogen chloride is hcl firstly uh, i'm talking about the berzelius hypothesis this hypothesis got failed and then equal notes the avogadro hypothesis came and it's an application of avogadro hypothesis that we came to know the molecular formula of different compounds that we came to know it's an application of avogadro hypothesis which have been derived from obviously berzelius hypothesis so it's an application of this hypothesis that we are getting the molecular formula of hydrogen to be h2 chlorine to be cl2 but right right now at this point i'm just writing complete word hydrogen gas and chlorine gas i will discuss about this thing in my next video that will be the application of avogadro hypothesis so let us start, uh, take this talk more forward hydrogen gas hydrogen gas plus chlorine gas forms me hydrogen chloride gas now the one volume of hydrogen gas combines with one volume of chlorine gas 
to form me two volumes of hydrogen chloride gas uh, as it was a experiment so it was clear in the laboratory that one volume of hydrogen combines with one volume of chlorine to form me two volume of hydrogen chloride gas it was on a laboratory so we have we have got the exact volumes at uh, the exact ratios of the volumes uh, which which was stated by gelius x now let us apply the berzelius hypothesis it says that uh, two gases uh, under similar condition of temperature and pressure will have equal number of atoms in equal volumes so is uh, hydrogen gas is a one volume let us consider it is having n number of atoms the chlorine gas it's also having n number of atoms because these are one and one volumes it's a one volume that's why i have taken n atoms it's also the one volume that's why again i have taken n atoms n atoms but hydrogen chloride is two volume so this thing will have two n atoms uh two n sorry compound atoms uh now let's solve it more forward uh this and two n compound atoms let's talk about one compound atom or n compound atom sorry for uh take it to be one only now let's talk about one compound atom one compound atoms for uh, i think i should make it uh, more easy to you by taking one more extra step i am taking it to be only n compound atoms now i am taking it to 2n i have converted this to n that means i have halved the value 2n to n compound atoms then this value will also get halved it will become n by 2 atoms and this thing will also become then n by 2 atoms now this is one extra step that i have added for you now let's come to the conclusion now i will talk about if the if it is n compound atoms now i will talk about one compound atom that's a one compound atom then this thing will become half compound atom sorry half atom sorry it will become half atom and this thing will also become half atom so berzelius hypothesis states that half atom of hydrogen half atom of chlorine combines to form one compound atom of hydrogen chloride gas hopefully my students you got this point i'm repeating this again that berzelius hypothesis states that in this example that half atom of hydrogen gas that half atom of hydrogen gas combines with half atom of chlorine gas to form one compound atom of hydrogen chloride that i have derived from this equation now this theory got failed why this theory got failed because in reality if i am talking about a practical world and chemistry chemistry is in practical subject uh we are we are having practicals in the laboratories also in practicality or in reality and also let's talk about dalton atomic theory dalton atomic theory and the reality these both things says that half atom half atom of any element is not possible or half atom of any element half atom of any element does not exist 
and this has been stated by Dalton Atomic Theory because it says it's a whole number issues. And it's also this has been stated by Dalton Atomic Theory. What does Dalton Atomic Theory states that atom is indivisible? Means uh, atom is indivisible, but in the modified theory, I have also said that atom is Div divisible but to electron protons and neutrons the more subatomic particles but half atom does not exist the half electron the half proton it does not exist in practicality so that's why Berzelius hypothesis failed that's why Berzelius that's why Berzelius hypothesis was a big failure it failed because half atom does not exist and Dalton atomic theory supports this point yes half atom does not exist Dalton atomic theory states that firstly the atom is indestructible or indivisible the modified Dalton atomic theory states that the atom is divisible but into electrons, protons and neutrons. But if you talk about atom, the half atom, the fourth part of atom, the third part of atom, that does not exist. So Berzelius hypothesis failed. So what next? Then came the person called Avogadro hypothesis. Now Avogadro hypothesis have given some clues. Let's talk about that. Now I'm uh, now I'm starting the topic. Avogadro hypothesis. What does Avogadro hypothesis states? First of all, I am giving you some introduction. Uh, what's that introduction? First of all, an atom is the smallest particle of an element. Atom is the smallest particle of any element. Which can take part in a chemical reaction? Which can take part in a chemical reaction? And it may and an atom, an atom may or may not have independent existent existence independent existence let me make you some wo more points clear I'm giving you some more words uh, the half atom half atom does not exist independently you can also use this word that half atom also does not exist independently uh, or half atom is not possible or half atom does not exist independently the atom is in indivisible but in modified theory the atom is divisible but to electron protons and neutrons but if you talk about you are having an atom and it is divisible then let's talk about half atom one fourth atom one third atom that thing is not possible the atom is divisible to electrons protons but not to half 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 atom uh, like half atom like one third atom one fourth atom that does not exist so there came the Avogadro hypothesis 
Now let's talk about an atom is the smallest particle of element which can take part in a chemical reaction and an atom may or may not have independent existence. Now I'm talking about an atom. It may have independent existence but whole atom. One whole atom can have independent existence. Now what's the example of that independent existence? An atom may have independent existence. Its examples are noble gases. What are noble gases? Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, organon. These are the noble gases in which one one atom can have a independent existence. And it may not and the next point is it may not have independent existence. The rest elements of the power table that I'm talking about hydrogen, it does not have independent existence. It occurs as H2. It occurs as H2. Let's talk about chlorine. It occurs as Cl2. Let's talk about uh, bromine. It's, it occurs as bromine, Br2. Let's talk about ozone. It occurs as O3. So, Actually, I have given you the results first. Now, I am going to give you the proof. How have I get to prove that hydrogen is H2, how chlorine is, how chlorine gas is, sorry, Cl2, how bromine gas is Br2. That's the application of Avogadro hypothesis, which I will discuss in the next video. So, Avogadro hypothesis, an atom is the smallest particle of an element, which can take part in chemical reaction and an atom may have independent existence example noble gases and it may not have independent existence the rest non-metals h2 like cl2 br2 ozone o3 or like if i'm talking about sodium it, it occurs in salt in the form of cation example is nacl now nac i have read written nacl here sodium does not exist independently but it exists in combination with the chloride ion so this was the avogadro hypothesis now ozone is o3 Oxygen is O2, chlorine gas is Cl2, hydrogen gas is H2. These are the applications of a Vagadro hypothesis under the name of atomicity, which I will discuss in the next video. Now, let's take this talks more forward. Next, I'm talking about a molecule. Let's talk about a molecule. A molecule is the smallest particle. A molecule is the smallest particle of an element or a compound of an compound of an element or a compound which is capable of independent existence which is capable of independent existence so what are the molecules my dear students My dear students, what are the molecules? This is a molecule. It is of independent existence. Molecule independent existence. Molecule independent existence. It's a molecule independent existence. But this is formula unit. Because it's an ionic compound, I will discuss this thing in the next video. So, an atom is the smallest particle of the element. First of all, I'm talking about atom. An atom is the smallest particle of element which can take part in chemical reaction and an atom may have independent existence that's of the noble gases and it may not have independent existence like hydrogen single H atom does not exist independently but the molecule of hydrogen but the molecule of hydrogen what's that molecule that's H2 but the molecule of hydrogen exists independently it exists independently 
the molecule of ozone that's o3 it exists independently the molecule of chlorine gas it exists ind independently single chlorine atom uh, let me write it for you i'm writing single chlorine atom does not exist independently but cl2 molecule but cl2 molecule exists independently so that is the point that avogadro was trying to give like single atom of o does not exist but o2 molecule exists independently single atom of o does not exist but molecule of o3 it exists independently so hence let's talk about further i am writing hence comma equal volume of all gases equal volume of all gases under similar conditions of temperature and pressure contain equal number of contain equal number of molecules not the atoms now i'm coming back to berzelius and i'm comparing it with avogadro berzelius said equal volume of all gases under similar condition of temperature and pressure contain equal number of atoms this was a statement given by berzelius that equal volume of all gases under similar condition of temperature and pressure contain equal number of atoms but when i have calculated i came to the point that half atom does not exist to form one compound atom of hydrogen chloride gas so if half atom does not exist that means in chlorine gas in chlorine gas there is not any presence of atoms there is not any presence of atoms in hydrogen gas there's also not any presence of atoms in hydrogen gas molecules were present which came out to be the result in hydrogen gas molecule is present in chlorine gas molecule is present in hydrogen chloride gas also molecule is present now i'm writing this data again in the avogadro hypothesis i'm writing hydrogen gas plus chlorine gas and it combines to form hydrogen chloride gas now i'm taking the same way uh it's one volume one volume of hydrogen gas reacts with one volume of chlorine gas to form two volume of hydrogen chloride gas now instead of atoms now i'm writing one volume one volume of hydrogen gas will have n molecules the chlorine gas the one volume of chlorine gas will also have n molecules with the this not the n atoms notation have been uh, substituted by molecules in berzelius to avogadro hypothesis now two volume of hydrogen chloride gas will have two n molecules now 
let me simplify the product that's a hydrogen chloride gas uh, that's the two n molecules it will now let's talk about the n molecules only n molecules of hydrogen chloride will have n by 2 molecules of chlorine and n by 2 molecules of hydrogen gas then then now let's talk about one molecule one molecule of hydrogen gas hydrogen chloride gas sorry one molecule of hydrogen chloride gas will have one by two molecule one by two molecule of chlorine and one by two molecule of hydrogen gas that's the thing in practicality half atom is not possible but half molecule can be possible uh, let me t uh, give you a single uh, example like I'm just proving this thing uh, the molecular formula of chlorine is Cl2 that means uh, one molecule of chlorine gas stands for Cl2 uh, then half molecule will be only one chlorine atom one chlorine atom is possible but half chlorine atom is not possible so if half chlorine atom is not possible that's why Berzelius hypothesis failed but one chlorine atom but one chlorine atom of Cl2 is possible or chlorine gas is possible that's why Avogadro hypothesis didn't fail so uh, let's talk about uh, hydrogen gas also I'm giving the example from hydrogen I know that in, uh, in nowadays I know that it's hydrogen gas is molecular formula is H2 it's a one molecule one molecule of hydrogen is H2 then half molecule will be half molecule of H2 will be one hydrogen atom and yes one hydrogen atom exists uh, means a complete atom is there is a presence of complete one atom there is not a thing like half atom or one fourth atom it's a complete one atom that's why half molecule can exist and hence half molecule is possible means half half molecule of H2 is possible let me write here word is possible one chlorine atom is possible because is possible so that I got the points uh, let me write this thing in a clear manner uh, actually I am discussing directly results that they will get after the after studying after making you understand the application of Avogadro hypothesis but if I am directly applying the results you can easily understand it that one molecule of hydrogen gas one molecule of hydrogen gas is it contains two atoms of hydrogen then half molecule of hydrogen gas half molecule of hydrogen gas will have one atom of hydrogen one atom of hydrogen so half atom we can easily use the term half one atom sorry what I'm saying half molecule of hydrogen half molecule of hydrogen gas will have one atom of hydrogen we can use the word one atom of hydrogen we can say that we can say that in 
hydrogen chloride we are having one atom of hydrogen that's a simple word but we can't say that we can't say that one compound atom of hydrogen chloride have half atom of hydrogen this is not possible so avogadro hypothesis is the most applicable one which is used nowadays so i think that's all for today in the next video i'm going to discuss i'm going to discuss the application of avogadro laws that is how to calculate the atomicity and uh, वैसे i mean in uh, today's lecture i have given you the rough idea to find the atomicity atomicity stands for uh, hydrogen is having two atoms in one molecule chlorine is get having two atoms in one molecule that's called atomicity which will i make you understand in the next lecture and uh, another uh, application is to find the relationship between the molecular mass and the vapor density of the gas and the third application is to find the relationship between the mass of any gas and the volume of any gas i'm going to discuss these applications of avogadro hypothesis in the next lecture i hope you understood today's law topic it was a bit confusing but please listen to my lecture very carefully uh, only then you will be able to understand it uh, today's topic was bit confusing uh, if you have any doubt please do leave the comments on this video section comment sorry to leave do please do leave some comments on the comment section of this video so i hope you all understood today's lecture i have given my phone number on thumbnail of this lecture so if any one of you wants to book a paid one to one online class to clear doubts contact me on my phone number please like subscribe and share my channel to maximum number of students don't forget to press the subscribe button stay blessed